Hi, my name is Cameron Carlos from AnimeLocation.tv. Here I'm at Surrey 2017 with Miss Lauren Landon. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm okay. <laughs> so it's been actually a few years since the last time we all got the chance to talk. Was at Surrey 2014. How have you been since then? I've been amazing, but I don't believe you. It hasn't been that long. No, it hasn't. Really? Has it really? Yeah. Been that long? Oh God, that's way too long. That's way too long. I missed you guys. Things have been crazy. Things have been absolutely crazy. In a good way. So last time since we had the chance to talk, you happened to be in the wild popular Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. How did it go on that show? That was a lot of fun. I was really happy to be a part of a big franchise like that. And I got to work with Tony Oliver, who's a dear, dear friend of mine. And he's also a guest here this weekend. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Livia was a lot of fun to play. So because I'm a fan of the original Fate Stay Night. I have the original with when it still says Jenny on the box, oh. and it's not even the box set. It's disc by disc, Jenny on. Now you're just talking crazy. <laughs> I'm just talking crazy now. All right. <laughs> Following up again uh, with Attack on Titan, you happen to be in the first season, and season two has come out. How's that been going? Attack on Titan season two. So I've been watching it, and I've been keeping up on it, hoping like really hoping that Annie like comes back in it but it's finished now season two is finished now and it was entirely epic like it was so intense it was way the pace was way faster than the first season and it was pretty awesome so many of my friends that watch it are huge fans of it now because of season two so <laughs> also because you're in it a little bit I mean like in a flashback or two so <laughs> alrighty you also got to be the major part of the seven deadly sin franchise how is it being in that series and knowing that fun is now putting it out on physical discs so that even more fans get the chance to see it. First off, Seven Deadly Sins is such an awesome show. I was not expecting it to be that popular, and it really is. Also, just so everyone's clear, it's not season two that they put on Netflix. It's the OVA. We didn't have a say in that. It's not season two. But I love being a part of that show. It's amazing. And the fact that Funimation is releasing it on physical DVDs, I love that. Yeah. I, I'm a kind of old-fashioned when it comes to that. I love for it to have like a physical copy as opposed to just the streaming on it. So I think it's awesome. Well, also, I don't have streaming, so it gives me a chance. That I don't have any streaming services at all. So, so does that mean that you're like a fan of Blockbuster, like same as yeah. myself? Well, I actually buy. I, I buy. I buy, oh yeah, tons. Well, no, I'm saying, but you could still buy DVDs of Blockbuster. Well, they're not around anymore, but bring back Blockbuster. We want more Blockbusters. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually buy all my anime, actually. Good for you. Good for you. I've, Legally. Oh, shh. Through Right Stuff and Amazon. <laughs> oh, I mean, Right Stuff's fine. Right Stuff's legal. All of that stuff, as long as it's legal. That's it. That's the only people I buy through. There you go. So uh, you got to return to the Blaze Blue franchise in After Memory, the anime. How was it like to turn, return back to Wonderful Lady of Lychee? Oh, playing Lychee will always be very near and dear to my heart. I'm really sad that we didn't get to do the last game, but the anime was a lot of fun. The anime was a lot of fun. I really hope that they continue it. Like, I hope they make another Blaze Blue anime and that I get to play the booby lady again because that never gets old. So. <laughs> I also don't mind that uh, the, the one character gets to just call you that 24-7. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Tao. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, and you got to be the new version of Hunter x Hunter. Was it like uh, doing that, knowing that a lot of your fellow cast members are here this weekend and on top of that I got to be on Toonami. Oh it's so cool. Also my character is a total badass. He is this adorable little boy who you think is so cute in a little kimono. He, he'll kill you with paper essentially. <laughs> he's so cute. His name's Kaluto. He's Kiloa's youngest brother. He's so cute but he's deadly. Don't piss him off. <laughs> Tell us about some news from the Testament of the new Sister New Devil. Okay, okay, so I'm so excited to talk about this. Testament of Sister New Devil is a more like adult kind of theme show. It's action. It is an etchy title, but it's so much fun. It's so much fun, and it's going to be coming out this October. If people aren't familiar with it, it's got demons. It's got heroes in it. It's got funny characters. It's got awesome, beautiful characters. I love the art. It's awesome. I really do love the show. It's awesome. And it was so much fun to work on. Uh, so does it... Um Never mind. So, uh, can, can you tell fans carefully about the plot and why you should be watching this intriguing series? Carefully? Basically go on an adventure with the main character, Basara, and his two new stepsisters, Mio and Maria. Alrighty then, we're good. <laughs> you yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's, uh, it's not that. It's not that bad. But no, we we all had a blast on it. It was so much fun, and I honestly, I legit really like the story. And 
You know, there's a couple of etchy titles out there like High School DxD. Yeah. That, you know, have just that. They have action, they have story, they have, you know, suggested material, and that's really what it is. Okay. So, I mean, there's there's some stuff in there, but again, it is for mature audiences, but I genuinely, I really enjoyed being a part of it. So. Sorry about that. All righty, cool. <laughs> so, uh, we will get into Magical Girls in a second, but challenge, uh, but challenging was it for you how challenging was it for you to do sailor neptune and sailor moon knowing that it's a very reserved character and also that um it opens up a lot of boundaries for a lot of people on character development and the lgbt community so first off sailor neptune was my favorite character when i first started watching sailor moon um back in the 90s yeah. she was my favorite character so the fact that i'm playing her x amount of years later is a huge treat for me second of all or third of all I lost track. I don't even know. It's am I on third? Am I on third? Okay, we'll go with third. Third of all, <laughs> um, I'm really happy that Viz Media is going with the original relationship between Uranus and Neptune because they have been lovers. They've always been lovers, right. and it really. I'm really hoping that that it gives more of a positive vibe yes. because we all want to be supportive of each other. And I know myself and at least if not the entire cast, we are all incredibly supportive of the LGBTQ community. And Viz Media is going with the original story. So not only do we have Uranus and Neptune, but we also have Kunzite and Zoocyte. We didn't change any genders, we didn't change any relationships, which Again, the censorships back in the 90s were not really anyone's call at control. It was more of the higher-ups yeah. call. So they didn't really have a choice in that matter. But I'm really happy that we went with the original, and it makes me really happy because they're honestly one of, one of my favorite anime couples. There's just so much love there. No, there really is. There's so no, much I, I love it. There's so much anime like love there. There's so much passion. There's so much loyalty there. And they're really cool, too. I want to be here when I grow up. <laughs> Like really badly. <laughs> I want to learn how to play the violin. I want to be a beautiful painter. It's it's ridiculous. But her being um, a reserved character. Are you saying I'm not reserved? <laughs> are you saying I don't have the capability of being reserved? No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> this is what happens when you have an interview with me. I switch. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so... Going along with this year's uh, Metsurikon theme is Magical Girl versus Mecha. Which side do you support, young lady? What do you think? Which do you think? I don't know. I play, let's see. I play one, two, three, four. I think like four Magical Girls in like the 11 years that I've been doing this. So I'm going to go with Mecha. No. Magical Girls all the way. Absolutely. Magical Girls. Yes. Alrighty, And for, uh, we always know about the pesky NBA. Uh, what uh, titles can fans check out that we didn't talk about that you want fans to know about at this time? I don't think there's any titles that I can talk about right now, unfortunately. Um, no, no games either. But keep an eye out for uh, more Kaluto in Hunter x Hunter. And keep an eye out for Testament of Sister New Devil coming out this October. So please keep an eye out for that. And an ear. And an arm and a leg and whatever body part, you know would be, that's going to go a whole different direction. Anyway. <laughs> Alrighty. And uh, is there any way we can keep up with you on the internet, Twitter, Facebook? Yeah, go ahead and look me up on Twitter. It's Lauren underscore A underscore Landa. Any other page, any other page is a fake. Any other page is fake. And any other, I'm going to put this out there, actually. Um, there is an Instagram page called Lauren Landa. There's no space in between. That is a fake profile. Do not follow that profile. Um, and then also, if there are any, there's only one Facebook page for me, private, and it's private, so any other page that's claiming to be me is fake. So just so you guys know, please do your homework, please do your research. Not everybody on the internet is actually that person that they are pretending to be. So again, the Instagram profile under Lauren Landa, which there is no space in between, that is a fake. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter, and there will be more social media stuff with me in the future. So. Alrighty, and is there a final message you want to get out to wonderful fans that have been watching and listening to all your wonderful work for all these many years? I'm so glad you guys aren't sick of me yet. Um, I love what I do, and I love meeting everybody. As you can see, we have like a ton of people here at our autograph signing, and I love Matsuri Khan. I love coming here. But thank you guys so much for the support, especially those to, to the fans that are incredibly positive. I'm so grateful for all the fans out there. You guys rock. Thank you so much. Hey. Thank you so much again for coming out. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me.